Thanks for all the comments and questions after the last video. The level of interest in this is pretty exciting to me. The product being launched next week has been almost three years in the making. Uh, I began developing the content in the mid 80s. And in 1999, I published a book that was an adjunct to Vertical Truth Chordal Mechanisms for the Guitar. It was called Unique Chord Voicings. Since that time, mostly on the gig, I've worked out a lot of implications and uh, come up with all kinds of material that's not in the book. So much material that it's taken me three years to codify it all. The result is the product that I'm going to launch next week to Master Guitar School site members. I don't think there's anything else like it, and I'm really excited about it. I'm J.U. Daly, and I've been a professional guitar player since about 1970. I estimate I've played about 10,000 gigs. Since the early 80s, I've taught 50 to 90 personal students a week. I'm still doing both those things. In 1999, I released a series of method books for the guitar called Vertical Truth Chordal Mechanisms for the Guitar. That book has been used by teachers all over the country since then. A few years ago, I created and I maintain MasterGuitarSchool.com, which is bringing you this video and the product launch next week. In this video, I'm going to quickly show you four types of seventh chords in two positions. So there'll be eight different chord shapes. And then we're going to add open strings to those shapes to create unique chord voicings. So the six string root shapes, we're going to do a major seven. I'm going to do these at the third fret just to show the chord shapes. So you're muting the fifth string. You're playing the root on the sixth string, the seven, and the third. That's a major seven. If you flat the seven, that gives you a dominant seven. That would be G7 in this case. If you flat the third, that's G minor seven. And if you flat the seven again, that's a G diminished seven. That could also be a G minor six difference between a diminished seven and a minor six is the fifth and we're omitting the fifth from this so the minor six would have a natural five and the diminished seven would have a flatted five so because we're omitting the fifth the minor six and the diminished seven are the same thing we're going to call it a diminished seven because we're in the context of seventh chords here so those are your four shapes from a six string root, major, dominant, minor, and diminished. From a fifth string root, we have major. Fifth string root is called close voicing, root third seven. Close voicing because the notes are as close as they can be to each other. So there's major seven. We're gonna flat to seven to make it dominant. Flat to third to make it minor, and flat to seven again to make it diminished. Okay, so now we're going to add the first two strings open to create unique chord voicings. I'll play the ones that I find the most useful. So we'll start with a six string root major seven chord shape. If we put it at the first fret, F major seven sharp 11, third fret. G major 13, fifth fret is A major 9, uh, seventh fret, B major 7, 11, eighth fret is C major 7, tenth fret is D major 9, 13, and the twelfth fret is E major 7. Sixth string open. Do that. Be careful not to hit the fifth string if you do that. So those were the major chord types on the sixth string root. Major chord types on the fifth string root. At the second fret would be B major 7, 11. 
third fret would be C major seven. Fifth fret, D major nine thirteen. Seventh fret, E major seven. Eighth fret, F major seven sharp eleven. Tenth fret, G major thirteen. Twelfth fret, A major nine. You can put the open A string under that. So those are the major chord shapes from a fifth string root, adding the first two strings open to create unique voicings. Now for the dominant chords, six string root. At the second fret, F sharp seven, 11. G 13. At the fourth fret would be G sharp seven, Aug sharp nine. Fifth fret is A9. Uh, sixth fret would be B flat seven, flat five, flat nine. Seventh fret, B711. Ninth fret, C sharp seven, sharp nine. Fred is D9 13. 11th fret, E flat 7, Aug flat 9. And it's a 12th fret, E7, you could use the open E. Now for the dominance on a fifth string root. At the first fret, we have B flat seven, flat five, flat nine. Second fret, B seven, 11. At the fourth fret, C sharp seven, sharp nine. Fifth fret, D nine, 13. Sixth fret, E flat seven, Aug flat nine. 7th fret, E7. 9th fret, F sharp 7, 11. 10th fret, G13. 13. At the 11th fret, uh, A flat 7, Aug sharp 9. 12th fret, A9. 7-11. 9th fret, C sharp minor 7. 10th fret, D minor 9-13. And the 12th fret is E minor 7. You can use the open E. Don't pick the 5th string if you do that. Okay, the minor chord types from a 5th string root. From the 2nd fret, B minor 7, 11. Fourth fret, C sharp minor 7. Fifth fret is D minor 9, 13. Cool. E minor uh, 7 is the seventh fret. Uh, the ninth fret, F sharp minor 7, 11. 
the 11th fret, we have A flat minor 7 aug. And at the 12th fret, we have A minor 9. Could have the open A. Now we're ready for diminished chord types. These are arranged differently. Uh, they're going to be moved in minor thirds, which is uh, that kind of sound. It's a diminished arpeggio. So, without going into a lot of detail on this, um, the full diminished seventh chords are grouped into three groups with four chords in each group, and each chord moves in minor thirds. Now, some of these are going to be uh, pretty dissonant, but I include every possibility um, because you never know what, what you might find usable. Something that I might not find so usable, you might find a use for. They move in minor thirds, which is three frets. That's how we're going to group them. So we're going to start with F, and the naming of these things can get really uh, thorny. There will be disagreements among knowledgeable musicians about how these should be named, and uh, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, if, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I have a blog. It's called Arguing Over Fretboard Diagrams. Uh, so, and there's another blog that's called Name That Chord. Just go to masterguitarschool.com, click on the blog link, and do a search for those two blogs. Esoteric stuff, who cares? Uh, at the first fret, we have a, an E over an F diminished 7, is what I call it. It would be an E major triad over an F diminished chord. So remember, we're adding open strings to these diminished shapes to make unique voicings. So this is E over F diminished 7. Then we've got A flat diminished 7 sharp 5. Then we've got B diminished 7 11, and then we've got D diminished 9. That's the first group of four. The second group of four will start at F sharp. F sharp diminished 7 11 flat 7, so there's an odd, there's a double flat 7 and a flat 7 in this chord. We have an A diminished 9 uh, with a natural 5, so this would more likely be called A minor 6, 9, A minor 6, 9. Uh, C diminished 7 with a major 7 and a major 3rd. See how weird that is? But you might find a use for that sound in a movie soundtrack or something. Then you got E flat, diminished seven, aug flat nine. Third group of four starts on G. G diminished seven with a major third and a 13. B flat, diminished seven, flat nine. D flat, diminished seven with a major seven. diminished 7 with a natural 5, so probably more likely E minor 6. That's the diminished chord from a 6th string root, which is called an open voicing. From the 5th string root, same concept. Three groups with four chords in each group, and the, the chords move in minor thirds. So, uh, from a fifth string root, we have a B diminished 7 11. That just sounds like an E7 with fifth in the bass. From D, uh, we have a D diminished 7 with a 9 and a 13. with a major 7 
major seven. And then A flat diminished seven with a sharp five. Group two starts on C. C diminished seven with a major seven and a major third. Weird. E flat. E flat diminished seven, aug flat nine. F sharp. That's a nice sounding. F sharp diminished seven, 11 with a flat seven. There's a double flat seven and a flat seven. And then uh, A diminished nine with a natural five. That would be A minor six, nine, but it doesn't have, it has more of a diminished sound to it in that register. Group three will start on D flat. flat diminished seven with a major seven. E. E diminished seven with natural five. Uh, G diminished seven with a major third. And B flat diminished seven flat nine. So there you have it, four types of seventh chords in two voicings, open voicing, close voicing, major, dominant, minor, diminished, adding the first and second string open to create unique voicings. There's a bunch of very interesting sounds right there. Some of the questions or issues people have, sheer quantity. Uh, I've dealt with this question in both the previous videos, short answer. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. There's thir over 1,300 fretboard diagrams. But you got to realize that, as you can see, you have one shape that gets moved all over the neck. And because the open strings change in relation to the root note, when you move it, it becomes a completely different type of chord, even though it's the same shape. You have 12 possible roots for any given shape. So if you divide 1300 by 12, you get about 108. And as I just demonstrated with all those seventh chords, they don't work at every fret. So it's less than 108 because not every root is usable. So it's not as much as it appears. Plus, every lesson is designed to be self-contained. In, in other words, you could go through lesson three and just stop and still have dozens, hundreds of unique chord voicings just from the first three lessons. So each step is has value in and of itself and you could stop at any point and still have massive function out of any step that you take. And, you know, it's all about one step at a time, baby steps, little chunks of things that you learn really well and you can use them for the rest of your life, you know? So that's 32 little chunks of stuff. And you just take it one step at a time. Don't worry about the big picture. Uh, that's, that's big picture is my job. So just one step at a time. Don't worry or be in a big hurry to get through everything and to understand everything. You don't have to know the names of any of this stuff. You know, you just have to know what they sound like and like, you know, find the ones you like and figure out how to use them. You'll hear them in all kinds of pop songs. And there's also going to be a lot of chords that you have never heard anywhere. So it's good stuff. Uh, some of the chords can be difficult to play. A few of them are impossible for some people. But again, that's a very small percentage. And uh, poor workman blames his tools. I will give you workarounds if they exist for all the more difficult fingerings. But uh, even if you only use the easiest to finger chords, you're still going to have hundreds of chords that uh, you can do. So 
you know, maybe a half dozen impossible fingerings to do out of uh, hundreds. So that's not a big deal. Now there's been another question come up. Didn't you give all these lessons away for free already? Yes, I did. These lessons have been given away for free over the last two and a half years in the monthly newsletter. That's why it took, you know, two and a half years, almost three years to put all these together. I was doing it one lesson at a time, month by month for the newsletter. But what I've discovered is, is that people are interested in convenience. So can you find, uh, you know, lesson six from two years ago in your email? Probably not. This product, you can download all 32 lessons in a PDF file to your device of choice, and it's yours. It's on your drive. You can do whatever you want with it. You can keep it forever. It's yours. So uh, people are interested in that. People are interested in convenience. All these lessons are available for free still in the free lessons section of the members only side of the website. If you're a site member, you have access to tons of free lessons and all the unique voicing lessons are available from that page. Now, these are not exactly the same thing as the PDF, but uh, they are what the PDF was created from. So yeah, they're all available for free. Again, convenience. Number two, I'm getting messages from the website platform that I am approaching a hundred page limit on my website. And so my choice is either to pay more money to expand the website or delete pages that I have on there. And I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, but I am not guaranteeing that all the free lesson pages are going to be around forever. Some of those may be deleted to make space. Uh, I haven't decided yet but uh, no guarantees. So you might want to download the PDF just to be sure. Another question that's come up is, I'm interested in this, but I'm not sure I'm at a level where I can understand it and utilize it. Is it still worth it to download this product? The answer is yes, it is. You don't have to understand all the theory behind things to be able to use them. There are plenty of million dollar guitar players who are very good and they have no idea what they're doing. You just have to know what sounds you like. You don't have to, you don't have to know that that's an A9 chord. You just know what, it, you just need to know what it sounds like. That sounds cool. See? There was some um, reticence or intimidation, maybe, with all the names of things that I'm spewing out. You know, G flat, major seven, sharp 11, flat 13, blah, 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 blah. That's just me. I'm very interested and obsessed with the theory and the why behind things. I feel like that knowing that stuff has made me a better guitar player. But it's not uh, an essential thing to be able to enjoy playing. And uh, fun is the point, really. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't fun to me. I love the guitar, I love everything about it. And uh, that the love of that has not diminished with age. So if I got a guitar in my hand, I'm a pretty happy guy. So no, you don't need to know the theory in spite of the, all the chord names and stuff that I I'm continually uh, spewing out. Who cares? You just need to find the cool sounds and use them. Now, I'd like to step back a little and look at a bigger view. There are 32 lessons in this series. If the first lesson is all you did, that was what I gave you in the first video. Remember that? Two chord shapes and um, a dozen different chords, uh, more than a dozen. If that one lesson with those two simple shapes notched up your playing, uh, then that one single lesson in and of itself is priceless to you, right? And it's gratifying to me because I want to help you be a better guitar player. 
my agenda is to produce students who have their own voice. And what I'm giving you is tools and vocabulary to be able to do that. That's one of my main functions as a teacher. And it's one of the things that I love when uh, a student comes in and he plays me something. I didn't teach you that. You know, where'd you get that? Oh, I, I see that that chord that you're playing there you got from me, but you're using it in a way I didn't show you. That's what I love. So that one lesson, priceless to you, gratifying to me, win-win, it's a beautiful thing. I've helped you be a better guitar player, and that's one of the things I love about teaching guitar. And you haven't spent a dime. Then think about what the next lesson might offer, and the next one after that, and the next one after that, times 32, right? So there's a ton of stuff. It's all cool, it's all good, and each step in the process is its own reward. So there's no failure in not going through the whole thing. If you just go through half of it, you'll be better. If you, if you just do one lesson, hey, you've already got that for free. That was the first video. Better guitar player. You know, second lesson, better yet. Third lesson, better yet. You see what I'm saying? So each step along the way can be the end point for you. Just depends on how much you want to learn, how far you want to progress, and so on. So you don't have to worry about the quantity of stuff and how long it's going to take. Those kinds of questions are self-sabotaging. How long is this going to take? You know, how many lessons are there? How long is it going to take? Those are all questions that keep you from focusing on the next step. The next step is the thing that you should be looking at. Don't worry about the rest of it. If you got a good teacher, the big picture takes care of itself as you go along. What your responsibility is, is to look at the next step. And uh, you get something out of the next step, you can camp out there for years and get all kinds of uses, value out of each step. This lesson series will give you stuff to do, keep you learning, keep you evolving for years to come. It's a treasure trove of stuff. If you want to see a really quick like promo of what this PDF looks like, here it is. So that'll give you an idea of what it looks like. Now, the next step of this process will be an email to site members only. The email will link you to a page that will give you all the details and the opportunity to download this product. There will also be some added bonuses and some combinations of things, different offers you can have. You'll, there'll be choices, but uh, it's all hinged on, around unique voicings. The one time ridiculously low launch price for this product will be next week. It'll last for a week only and it'll be available to site members only. So the next email will only go to site members. It won't be available on any of the social media pages, no Facebook, no Twitter. You know, it'll be a direct email to site members. So if you're not a site member, and you're interested in this, you need to sign up now because the email for the launch will go out Monday. So if you're at all interested, please sign up to masterguitarschool.com and be on the lookout for the next email coming on Monday. So we'll see you then.